Can I say this is the new Jesus? Ah! Come on, you know I'm chill as fuck, girl. Ah! Jesus, I pray to you. I need help with my music choices. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. I'm just happy you're going to church. Live from my grandmother's basement, we are the only Chris Gethard Presents podcast. We are trash people. I'm Emily Pineapple. And I'm Forrest, the keeper of the canon. And we talk about the episodes of CGP that are coming up. We preview an episode for you and give you everything you need to know before you start watching. Typically, that's uh, examining the host, uh, going through like the 15 things we love about them or 15 of their social media posts. Uh, But this Wednesday is a very, very special Wednesday, isn't it? It is. It's pizza night, the sandwich, the holiday. The holiday that's better than sandwich night. That's its tagline. That is the tagline. We have to say it. I mean, it's not our opinion. It's just what it's called. It's just what it's called. Uh, So that's going to be episode 306, Pizza Night, airing on December 18th, 2019, uh, to be hosted by Sky Daddy himself, the man that we met on Coochie Creek. Yes. David Ray Martinez. I'm so excited for this. He is our Pizza Night host uh, and his son, his son, Sebastian Ray Martinez, son of Sky Daddy. So if Sky Daddy is our Sky Daddy. Right. Jesus. Yeah. Um, Would Sebastian Ray Martinez be like Jesus squared? I'm not good at math. Because it's like God gave us his only begotten son. Who gave us his only begotten son. Yeah. All these his's are uppercase, just so you know. Yeah, just so everyone knows. Um, the patriarch is real. Uh, he oh, of course. is definitely gendered male. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously. And he watches over all of us. Uh, and also Keith Haskell. Yes. The Nana Man himself, director of Fetch. And the upcoming Fetch 2, which will air on New Year's Day 2020. Yeah. So get excited for that, too. Ring in the new year by uh, fetching it. Yeah. He's fetching the new year for us. Fetch will finally happen. It will. Um, so we thought that tonight, uh, because it's sort of a strange episode, it's pizza night. There's never been a pizza night before. No. There have been many iterations in uh, its announcement and, and what's yeah. going to happen. We're going to go through a history of pizza night, the holiday, pizza night better than sandwich night, the holiday. Uh And then we're going to talk a little bit about the history of pizza. And then at the very end, we're going to do some other pizza-related discussions and questions. Yeah. So for the first part of the podcast, it's things that we actually have some sort of specialty in and that you're not (laughs) going to hear anywhere else. You will not hear anywhere else anything about Pizza Night on CGP. If you want to learn more about the history of pizza, there are a lot of podcasts that you can listen to. Yeah, we start with the Sclusi. Yeah, they're very interesting and I would definitely suggest checking them out. (laughs) They were very fun today. So why don't we get right into it? Forest Keeper of the Canon. Why don't you uh, keep some canon for us? Tell us about the story of Pizza Night. Sure. So the story of Pizza Night began on December 10th when Carmen Christopher said on Discord, thinking about hosting a CGP Pizza Night tagline, it's better than Sandwich Night. Which was uh, pretty fun. The Discord. I like how the Discord is now becoming a, a part of the show creation rather than just like a thing a companion to the show yeah it's been really cool seeing it get like fully integrated into the whole the whole show narrative and storyline yeah so carmen Um, again on the discord pledged that he would provide pizza uh but that outside pizza is also welcome and promised he promised he he came out and promised carmen christopher uh hero turned heel of the chris gethard show promised us the most expensive Pizza in the city. What, did I say TCGS? Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't let the past die. No. I'm going to have to kill it. I have to. You have to. I have to. You have to. Uh, this pizza night is also on Star Wars Eve. Yes. For future people listening to this, Star and Wars Eve. Star Wars Eve for America. Yes. The other, the rest of the world 
has gotten it already by that point. Wait. Oh, by that point. Europe gets Star Wars before we do now. Will our friend Sam in Australia from uh, the real CGP podcast, which no longer exists. Yes. Uh, and the show. Yeah. And the Discord. So he will be able to see Star Wars before us. I don't I know about Australia. I know mm. Europe gets it, but I don't know about Australia. We'll have to check in on that. Um, but yeah, so he he made all of these promises to us, these campaign promises. He did. And Gethard initially responded by insisting that Pizza Night is not a thing and that Pizza Night will never be a thing. But fate intervened when he got an acting gig that forced him to be in Los Angeles on December 18th, which forced the cancellation of the Gethys, the awards show that was supposed to be airing this week. So on uh, December 11th, during the CGB after party, which we host, it's just a Discord chat. It is not recorded. It is no. ephemeral, like improv and cake um, and pizza, ultimately. And really, ultimately, everything in the universe as it will all eventually end. Yeah, but it's more immediately ephemeral. That's true. The way that pizza is. That's true. Um. Except there's no leftovers, which is one of the best things about pizza. No, there there is not. Um, but sometimes we do get extremely special guest appearances. We use, Sky Daddy often is yeah. there because he's fucking incredible. Our Sky Daddy is always with us. Um, and Carmen called in and Gethard called in yeah. from Los yeah. Angeles. Uh, they butted heads as they often do, over uh, Carmen getting too big for his britches. And Geth announced uh, when we, in a shocking turn of events, we asked him what he was excited for, for the Gethys. He told us that the Gethys are canceled and that Carmen had been given the December 18th spot to host Pizza Night Better Than Sandwich Night, a completely unrelated holiday. Jersey Dave, Keith, and a number of other longtime Gether people immediately signed on to make sure that Pizza Night is the best episode of CGP ever because that, as the crew, that's their job. They just have to make yeah. a great episode. It doesn't matter. It's not upset. It's not. They're not trying to upstage Chris. They're no. just trying to make a better episode. It's not about Chris. It's about the show. Exactly. Um, and in another like really shocking twist. So we're we're already we're like cool. There's going to be pizza night. It's better than sandwich night. Carmen Christopher, heel of of Chris Gethard Presents, is going to be presenting it. <laughs> but then on December 13th, Friday the 13th. Oh, that's a good point. My favorite days yeah. of the year. Friday the 13th, it was announced that like Moses, Carmen would never see the promised land that he led us to and made a bunch of false promises about <laughs> when he realized that he couldn't make it to pizza night. And so our Sky Daddy, who is always there for us, saved the day and took over that hosting spot. And I'm glad that, you know, that I think that Sky Daddy taking it over means it's going to be a really positive, fun night. <laughs> and I don't know that Carmen's would have been. I think Carmen's might have been a lot more about proving he's better than Gethard. And we don't need that. We need, you know, we need we need fun and positivity as we round out this year. We do, honestly. I mean, there's fucking impeachment shit going on. Christmas is always a bummer. I mean, I, fair, most people like Christmas, and I appreciate your like of Christmas. I love secular Christmas. Secular Christmas is amazing, but it's often a bummer, you know. It uh, can be. It's been a tough year yeah, for everybody. And so I'm just, I just appreciate that our Sky Daddy is here to give us, to hype us up. Yeah, no, this is, this is like the perfect episode for, for our Sky Daddy. But we also have two extra facts about the upcoming pizza night. The first is that the official dress code of pizza night is apparently tuxedos. And is that for every human tuxedos? That or was not. Or could a human wear a ball gown? Tuxedos is all I've seen. I really want to wear a tuxedo. But I think I, th I imagine that if someone came in a ball gown, it would it, they would be it would be fine. It hits that formality level. But I also love the idea that everyone who comes is in tuxedos. I gotta rent me a tuxedo. I also want someone to bring like their dog <gasps> and their dog to wear like a little tuxedo and everything. Oh my gosh, is there gonna be a Skype in portion of this show? I wouldn't be surprised, especially with Sky Daddy. Yeah. Like I, I think with Carmen probably anyway, just to like again upstage sandwich night. But I think with Sky Daddy it'll just be a fun community event. Yeah. I think so. 
that's, and then, that gets me thinking about a tuxedo for a cat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I hope that no one tries to kill it this time. Well, you know, I mean, I don't know what you all have been talking about with my cat being in danger, but I don't know. People were really concerned. They looked behind us, saw something. Who knows? I didn't see anything. Um, pizza have been people. Sorry, pizza. Ha. Huh. People have been saying pizza noches. Is that am I saying that right? I think so. In relation to pizza night, uh, which implies that 2019's pizza night will only be the first of many more to come. Because that's the plural. Oh, yeah. But that's, that's what people true. have been typing. So. Oh, noches as night. Yeah. Like, I, I was thinking buenas noches, which is like good night to me. So I'm like, pizza, good night. And then I'm like, nope, Emily, that's not how language is. But working. according to my ex- amazing skill in Spanish, which I mean is going to Google Translate, it does mean plural. And people have made that joke. Mm. So I think it is actually, that is like, I don't think it's, an, I don't know if it's an intentional promise and prophecy of our future, but I hope it comes to pass. I hope we get pizza night and sandwich night every year. I like that. I would love it. It's great. I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'm here for anything Sky Daddy shows us. Um, we don't have a biography of David Ray Martinez, but we do want you to check out his Instagram. He's yes. at David Ray Martinez on Instagram. And there's a ton of really adorable videos. If you search hashtag Sebastian Ray Martinez, they perform together like all the time. Really? Yeah. Ooh. Like, first off, there's a series of just adorable and hilarious videos of him waking up, of, sorry, of uh, Sky Daddy waking up uh, his son. Oh. I, I, I want, like, a cool nickname for his son. Well, maybe that's something we can get through Sandwich Night. You mean Pizza Night. It's better than Sandwich Night. I do mean Pizza Night. I was living in the past this time. You need to kill it if I you will, have to. I will kill it. I appreciate you. Um... Yeah, so we'll we'll perhaps have a cool nickname for him. Yeah. But they perform together a lot. There's a lot of cool videos, really cute, of uh of Sky Daddy waking up Sebastian, like for school, um, in Aww. various ways. It's like one of them is like how a crackhead wakes someone up. I have to see this one. <laughs> and his hand is covered in flour. <laughs> <laughs> um and he like has a squirt bottle in one of them. Um, it's it's very cute. Uh, and I think Sebastian also does acting. There was like a little commercial. Oh, cool. Um, that I'm not sure where it was aired, yeah. but you know, just like a moment of him. And there's a lot of he writes a lot of things. Uh, Sky Daddy does a ton of improv. Yeah. He also does stand up in New York. Uh, check him out. And he. Uh, they, he's writing about how they perform together, like, at different stuff. He's like, we'll be performing at such and such place. Oh, cool. New York place that I'm not familiar with because I'm a peon. Uh, <laughs> also because we live in San Francisco. Yes. Not yes. purely peonitude. Not merely peonitude. Um, but what we wanted to do for this episode and what we planned on doing when we thought it was Carmen, because, like, we've talked a lot about Carmen. Yeah. Um, three whole three whole fan pods about Carmen Christopher. Three of them. Um, so we thought we'd talk about the history of pizza. Yeah. 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 As we did with sandwiches on sandwich night. As we did. Uh, the tradition continues. Let's, let's get into it. Yeah. So eating things on top of flat bread has existed since there has been bread. That makes sense. Bread makes a great plate. It makes an excellent plate. Uh, so motherfuckers have been putting shit on bread. I don't know if that really counts as a pizza. People like to date the history back to the Persians, ancient Persians, like uh, putting shit on their shields when they're warring and putting dates and cheese on top of the bread on top of their shields huh. um, and nomming them. And then there's, of course, the Greeks putting yeah. cheese and other things on bread and like pita t- style things. And then the Romans came and empired all over the place. As they do. As they do. And they fucking loved the Greeks. Like, oh my God, they had the biggest heart on for the Greeks. <laughs> they enslaved the fuck out of them, but they still like, oh my God. Um, and so they adopted the like whole bread with stuff right. on top of it practice. And little known fact, the Romans were in Italy. Oh, that's where pizzas are. What? So, uh, yeah, 
I don't know that I think those were pizzas. Those sound more like flatbread to me. They do. They sound a lot like flatbread, but Italians got really fucking into flatbread. Mm -hmm. All the different parts of Italy had different types of flatbread. There are more types of flatbread in Italy than a lot of places, according to my research, which is extremely cursory, and I therefore may be extremely wrong. (laughs) Uh, But when we talk about a pizza, the thing that makes it a pizza to me is the tomato. Well, and I mean, I think that's also key. And tomatoes were first brought to Europe by returning explorers in the 16th century. But by the 17th century, they had already become a staple of cuisine in Southern Europe. And so I think that that, that's sort of closer to the birth of the pizza. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so the term pizza, uh, and this I'm, I'm picking up from the Dictionary of Italian Food and Drink by John Mariani uh, in... 1998, uh, which was pulled from foodtimeline.com, the coolest fucking website yeah. ever. No. All it is is primary sources about shit. Yeah, they were a huge resource. They're like our main resource for this episode and for our sandwich episode also. But we're going to link to them in the show notes this week so you can check it out and see the histories of all your favorite foods. Just fucking poke around. Yeah. It's so much fun seeing what like fuckers in the 1830s had to say about like right? sandwiches. Um, So the term pizza is clouded in some ambiguity, though it may derive from an old Italian word meaning a point, which in turn led to the Italian word meaning pizzicare, to pinch or pluck, uh, which they are like, oh, because you like pinch the dough down, like, ooh. The word itself shows up for the first time in print uh, as a Neapolitan dialect word, pizza or pizza, um, Around 1000 AD. That's 1000 years after the first death of our Sky Daddy. And now it's 2020 years have passed. No. Since the death of Sky Daddy. Since this death of the first first Sky Sky Daddy. Daddy. Yeah. And our now Sky Daddy has is returning to us to tell us about pizza. Coincidence? I think not. So it's been a thousand and twenty years since yeah. Potentially the invention of pizza. Yeah. No coincidence. Okay. Um, so pizza, possibly referring to the manner in which something is plucked from a hot oven. Uh, going off into some other research, they used the word pizza for a long time to refer to any Neapolitan pastry. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like huh. it, it back in, you know, Italy in like those times, um, it had been used by other people going in and out of napoli so interesting like, you know whether or not motherfuckers actually called it that i'd love to see the full variety of pizzas from back then just to see how wide ranging that was because it sounds like a much bigger category than it is now if it was a bunch of pastries yeah it's sort of it, they think that it might have even just been referring to the way that we say pastry or the way That's that we crazy. say like bread good um that's crazy or like flatbread like that's just what a pizza was was huh. any of those things it was a category um this i thought was super interesting um the baked flatbread most people now think of as pizza originated in napoli of course and was a favorite snack of the occupying spanish soldiers at the diverna uh Caroligo. Car- i'm so sorry to my high school italian teacher i apologize to you you were such a good teacher, and I am so bad at this. Uh, in the 17th century, and it was baked by men called pizzaioli. What? Huh. What? They worked in small shops called laboratori. I love that that, that they were called laboratory. Fucking laboratory, right? But yeah. Fucking right, the pizzaioli. So, like, I don't know. That's what makes sense to me, because by the middle of the 19th century... Pizza just became the word for what we call a pizza. That does make a lot of sense as an origin. And I, right? I just love that there were pizza laboratories. I, I want a pizza lab <laughs> so bad. Um, I thought that was super interesting because once again, war defines the food that we eat. And that won't even be the only war that defines pizza. Oh, no. There are so many fucking wars in pizza. Like the history of pizza brought to you by war. Fuck, man. Yeah. Beautiful War. things out of terrible things. What is it good for? Pizza. Pizza. <laughs> it's good for pizza. Speaking of death, people initially thought that tomatoes were poisonous and so they avoided eating them because 
I mean, partially because it's of the nightshade family, but really because they were eating on plates of silver and pewter and the the acid in the tomato would cause the plate to tarnish and then people would be poisoned eating the tomato off of that tarnished plate. However, that only really happened to rich ass people. Right. Like high class people with silver and pewter uh, silverware. Yeah, the bar of, to that was pretty pretty high back then. <laughs> yeah. Uh so tomatoes took off in the Napoli region because it was hella poor. Makes sense. Hella poor. Tomatoes were super popular because they were super cheap because no one wanted to eat them. Uh, and they grow extremely quickly. They're extremely hearty plants. Anyone who's ever plant had a tomato plant knows like they're really good at being plants. Mm -hmm. They're so good. So skilled. So skilled at being plants. And so they're fucking awesome. Like, all you had to eat, really, was a piece of bread with some garlic and lard on it. Now you have this badass sweet plant that grows really easy, that's hella cheap. And, yeah, I mean, if I was, like, some poor fucker in Napoli who lived in quarters that didn't have cooking facilities, I would be hella pleased. Oh, yeah, I would love that. That sounds way better than garlic lard. Mm-hmm. But that's not the only misconception associated with pizza. It's also commonly believed that the margarita pizza is named after Italy's Queen Margarita to celebrate the unification of Italy. No, there were already pizzas with tomato, mozzarella, and basil, the ingredients in the margarita pizza, way before that, which I think is so interesting as like one of those cases where a ruler can craft a fake story that makes them seem so much more central to something than they really were. Maybe it was the pizza guy. Oh, shoot. I, I wonder think about if it's that. like one dude, the guy. So, of course, people had been. So buffalo mozzarella is the type of mozzarella that was in Napoli. Like they didn't have cows. They mm -hmm. had water buffalo. Um, some guy whose name is written somewhere in this thing <laughs> in our in our extensive notes um, did bring three pizzas to Queen Margarita and was like, which one do you want? And she was like, oh, I like the one with tomato sauce and cheese and green because That's it's like our flag. Raffaele Esposito. Raffaele Esposito. Of course, that already existed. I thought that it was him being like, I made this. You're right. No, you're well. I made this and I called it Margarita because I made it for her. So uh, that was me. I made it. I'm great. You're I mean, right. You're I mean right. It. That's what it was. It was the queen said, this is one of the best dishes I've ever had. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, oh, you like it? It's named after you now. It's named after you and I invented and it. And I made it. Yeah, you're right. That's definitely <laughs> that's definitely that guy. Whenever anyone came in and ordered any pizza, it's like, no, you should have this one. You know, I na the, named it after the queen because she liked it so much. I fed the queen. I fed pizzas. the queen. I fed the queen something I invented. She was like, wow, you're a clever dude because you invented this thing that I like. He also received apparently a thank you letter oh. from the royal household's head of table service, oh. which said, most esteemed Raffaele Esposito, I confirm to you that the three kinds of pizza you prepared for her majesty were found to be delicious. And 300 years later, his, and, uh, his descendant, Cameron Esposito... It was a hilarious stand-up. Mm -hmm. I wish I had like a bit I could point to to make that like a funnier joke, but I yeah. just thought of it. No, I know. I wish I thought of that earlier too. Yeah. So Mr. Mr. Esposito decided that he created the margarita pizza. But uh, after that point, even though, you know, fucking queen likes it, even though pizza became more accepted among the upper classes, it was still like a poor person food. Uh and it had spread like more throughout Italy now mm -hmm. because people from Napoli were spreading right. throughout Italy a little bit more. Uh, and there was a time when there were these dudes called Pizzole Ambulante, uh, ambula um, ambulante like ambulatory. Oh, yeah. Why? Because they were walking through the streets with big ass platters holding their pizzas, which they would sell to people. They'd be like walking around selling it to people in their homes that didn't have any cooking facilities because uh, poverty is terrible. Um, and they would sing. They would sing songs about how dope their pizza was in uh, order to sell it. I am legitimately surprised that hipsters in San Francisco haven't made this a thing again. Fucking right. The singing sellers. Oh, my God. I want to do that so 
bad. I got this fact also, and the wording of singing songs about how dope their pizza was, uh, from this podcast called After Nunified uh, with Emily and Sarah. I found this podcast today when looking for podcasts about pizza, and I am subscribing because they are hilarious and uh, very informative and... There's a chick named Emily who swears a lot. And so I think I kind of might have stolen her bit. But (laughs) there's room for more than one Emily who swears a lot. There has to be. There are so many of us. There was also a lot of room in Italy for pizza in the 18th and 19th century. (laughs) As pizza was by the 18th and 19th century, pizza's everywhere in Italy. And you're already starting to see various forms of it develop. At that point, the square form was more of a Sicilian thing. And then other ones were in other places. The round ones were in other places. The round sort of iconic pizza. Mm -hmm. Um, But pizza was about to have a glow up with the immigration of Italians to the United States of America. The good old U.S. of A. Italy may have invented pizza, but we perfected it. We perfected it. So Italian immigrants brought pizza to the U.S., uh, mostly building their own ovens to make their favorite breads themselves because... They were still really fucking poor. Yeah. And they were eating the poor people food that they ate when they were poor in Napoli. They're clever motherfuckers. Immigrants, get the pizza done. <laughs> um, and then the first licensed pizzeria was Lombardi's in New York in 1905. A few, It opened a few years after the 13 or 15 year old Pizzuello. Pizzuello. Pizza guy, pizza <laughs> pizza maestro, pizza expert Gennaro Lombardi convinced his boss to let him start making them to sell to factory workers at 53 and a half Spring Street in Little Italy in New York. And we included that. I included, I made sure to include where it was because yeah, I, like I do that. know that some people possibly listening and definitely going to pizza night are in fucking New York. Right. And so I'm really curious if that still exists, if by saying that they know where it is, what does it look like? No, it like? still exists because that it's still um, a pizza place. Scott Wiener who leads the pizza oh. tours around New York. Not Scott Wiener who's running for office in California. No, not our state senator, Scott Wiener. Pizza pizza tour guide Scott Wiener. He went there in one of the videos, like and talked to the owner who's descended from the pizza maestro Lombardi. If that was his alter ego, like if Scott Wiener, the senator, had an alter ego that was Scott Wiener, the guy who does pizza tours, would that make you more likely to vote for him? Because it would for me. I mean, I'd be a little bit curious why he's out of state all the time. That's a good point. You're like, no, you have a job here. Why are you in New York? You're about as far as you can get. He just needs a breather sometimes well, from no, our, okay. like, potato on pizza if, business. If he's, do- <laughs> if he's doing it on recess, if he spends mm. his recesses doing pizza tours, then I would absolutely be more interested in voting for him mm-hmm. because I want to see what kind of laws Big Pizza will make happen. Oh. Because if you're the pizza tour guide, Big Pizza is going to lobby you immediately. Oh, there's a lot of of big pizza lobbying. I'm sure. That goes on. I'm sure. Not in these notes, but I heard some podcasts. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, it makes sense. They have their big, big everything lobbies. Yeah. Fuck. Big pizza is a whole deal. Um, But yeah, he, a couple years later, because he immigrated when he was like between 13 and 15, depending on which YouTube video you watch. And it was the early 1900s. So everyone's age is kind of a. A ballpark guess because like, eh, record keeping was so bad. Eh. Um, but actually, uh, there was there was a pizzeria that existed in America before this one, uh, and it was in Boston right. in 1904 by the Bruno brothers. Uh, yeah. So Lombardi's is definitely the first pizza in New York, but may not yes. be the first pizza in America. But doesn't doesn't seem to be the first pizza in America based on. Yeah. The first pizzeria, the first place that's like, I'm selling y'all pizza. Yeah. Um, Initially, pizza was an Italian thing for Italians, for Italian immigrants. But by the late like 30s, you know, 1930s after the Great Depression, a lot of Americans were eating pizza in Italian restaurants, mostly on the East Coast. Where there were a fuck ton of pizzerias because there were a fuck ton of Italians. I saw in the research that it, what 
the other Americans were eating at the time because they thought pizza was too flavorful and that marked what it what the fuck as like uh, an immigrant food. <laughs> And so they were eating. <laughs> this food is too good. I think it's yeah. from those immigrants. Yeah, they were eating yeah. apparently like boiled fish on bread. Fuck! What? <laughs> what? It's just like no. I would always choose pizza over boiled fish on bread. I don't think that there's a better argument. I mean, there's of course the human argument for immigrants, right? Uh, being allowed to be wherever because borders are stupid and a lie. Uh But we would still be eating motherfucking boiled fish on bread. I truly realized how British early America was. Fuck, right? That their food was boiled fish on bread. Fuck, man. (laughs) I didn't realize it was so dire. I mean, it wasn't all as I I mean, but yeah, that was that was the like poor person's food of choice, I think, at the time. Fuck, man. Okay, well. Thank you, fucking Italians. Thank you, great grandpa, who also immigrated from Italy when he was about 14. Uh, It was like the age to, like, fuck off from Italy, apparently. Um, He did not make pizzas. He made wine. Yes. Um, But a very special phenomenon happened Hmm. to bring pizzas out of just the East Coast to make them an American thing. And once again, war plays its role in the pizza saga. Of course. It Uh, was. Of course. So truly, in in a sense, we have Hitler to thank for pizza. Because when he and Mussolini uh, decided, and someone else, I forget who. Hirohito from Japan. Oh, yeah. Well particularly in Europe, when they decided to, like, be fucktards and, like, fuck over their populations, a bunch of American soldiers had to go in there and stop that and bring some democracy to the motherfucking foreign soil. Well, they saved a bunch of people. Everyone loved them, all the townspeople. And these GIs would be heralded as heroes and given pizzas. That is the best reward for heroism. Right? So, like, they'd be coming through these towns after, like, liberating them, and motherfuckers would be so happy. They'd just be like, here, pizza. A screw a medal. I want a pizza. Fucking right. So, all these GIs came home. Even Eisenhower had a pizza there. And, that makes like, sense. And, like, developed a, a taste for it. They all came home, and they're like, give us some motherfucking pizza, bitches. I want to relive my glory days of taking down Mussolini. I wonder if Eisenhower was the first president to have a pizza. Probably. That's crazy to think about. Yeah. That's like way later than one would expect, I think. Yeah. So I'm not sure what would have happened uh, had Hitler and Mussolini decided to be less terrible. Um, We might be eating boiled fish on bread. We might be eating boiled fish on bread. And that's incredibly sad. So... It's still, it's popular now, but in the 1950s, it would start really giving fast food a run for its money Mm -hmm. because in addition to the GI's taste for it, people got into spaghetti and tomato sauce. And so that like the taste for that kind of food, that base slathered, slathered in thick and salty tomato sauce became like key to the American diet. And so pizza, which had once been intimidatingly flavorful and scary to xenophobes earlier (laughs) was now a taste Americans wanted. It's what America craves. I wonder if the 50s was when Italians became like, quote, white, unquote. I don't know. Because I feel like they're very much within, like when people are like, when fucking white supremacists are like, white people, like, Italians, Russians, Irish, Protestant, Catholics, like everyone, all of those people who are like Pantone white uh, (laughs) are in that group. Whereas before that, uh, they were considered strange and other. I wonder if it was the 50s. But the 50s, yeah, that was the heyday of pizza. Uh, Frozen pizza was invented in like 1963 and tasted terrible, but then it got better. Um, And one thing I thought was interesting was that one of the things that appealed about pizza to 1950s Americans 
was the, the social oh. element of it. It was because, like they liked that it was just easy to share and you could have it with friends or at slumber parties or for sock hops and all that, which was then that's from um, American Pie, an article by American Heritage magazine from 2006, where they sort of tracked the history of pizza and why it got so popular and why it became an American icon. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. It's the post-war boom economy. Everyone's super happy. Everyone is like kind of celebrating. I feel like Americans yeah. started feeling a sense of ownership over the places they quote liberated unquote uh like we saved these things these places so now they're part of us in a way maybe I, yeah, that's probably part of it i also just want thing i think that maybe when you started i think because i think i think if i remember correctly that like world war ii was where you started to sort of get the idea that like Americans of all kinds of creeds and stuff mm, mm -hmm. are part of like the melting pot idea oh, and all that. Oh, because Nazis are all Nazi-ish yeah. and we're not Nazis. We we like people of all types and now we're Nazis again. Um, but... Yeah, if I remember correctly, that is where that started. Um, hmm. And so that would then make sense that pizza gets embraced in a way it hadn't been previously. Because now it's, they're not, I mean, they're still other, other, but like even by, even in the twenties, they, uh, Italians were apparently still being. Oh, definitely. In the 20s. And so like, I think that that could be part of when at least the varieties of white people started to get <laughs> All more, together. more included. I think there were also a lot of, uh, like second and third generation, uh, people at that point That's because if too. people are getting there in the 19 whatevers that means they're having kids in like the 20s that means that those mm. kids are growing up that's my grandmother's time she was born in 1930 great grandpa got here sometime before they were doing like this whole immigration papers thing uh and just had to write his name down as a citizen of san francisco um I, i'm actually wrong on that oh, apparently you're wrong? the melting pot was first first originated in the U.S. back in 1788. Oh, fuck. And wow, you're so off. Continued through 1908 when there was a play called The Melting Pot. But then the 10s, 20s, 30s, and 40s, there was actually a reaction against that mm. because of all the wars and stuff. Hmm. Oh, yeah, there was like an isolationist yeah, sort of I forgot deal about that before. for a second. But the 50s are the birth of like modern America. So I think it's interesting that modern America and pizza have sort of enjoyed their rise together. They've called it in various places the domestication of mm. pizza when it became uh, frozen. Something else super interesting mm -hmm. I learned on the How Stuff Works podcast. Again, how war intersects with pizza. Hmm. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I learned this on 99% Invisible. Oh. Yes. Um, it, the episode has pizza in the title, but it's mostly about other food innovations uh, that were uh, caused by war that were that were the military created because the military needs to feed motherfuckers. Right. Um, and so they need food that lasts. And around the 50s, which was right after like the war, all of these innovations were happening because they had been developing stuff to send with their soldiers, things that lasted, things that had longer shelf lives. And so we had things like canning technology. We had things like uh, fucking soft cookies that live in a bag in your supermarket for ages, yeah. you know? Um, and they had partnered with uh, consumer manufacturers because it's way, way fucking cheaper. If you're the army and you need to have a bunch of rations for your soldiers, if there are citizens already buying that stuff, if a, uh, a citizen... Ah, uh, what's the word? Consumer? Right. Non-military factories are making it and stuff, and yeah. you can just buy it from them Yeah. with, like, your sweet military deals. Fuck, that yeah. cost goes way down. And so we were given frozen pizza. We were given that hard cheese, that hard mozzarella cheese. Oh, Mozzarella wow. cheese, like, fresh mozzarella is wet as fuck. That's why, like, margarita oh, yeah. pizzas and, like, Italian pizzas, it's slabs of mozzarella right. just kind of dotted around the pizza and like tomatoes underneath um but they had to turn the tomato sauce into more of a paste so that the crust wouldn't dry out when it was being frozen and they had to suck all the moisture out of the mozzarella and that's where you get your shredded cheese 
Wow, shredded mozzarella. They pulled all of the the moisture out of it, and then you could shred it, and then it could be more evenly over the pizza, and it could be frozen. Oh, that makes total sense. Like almost indefinitely. Yeah. One last pizza innovation to, we're going to talk about yes. is. That in 1960, Tom Monahan and his brother James bought an Ypsilanti, Michigan pizza joint called Dominic's. I'm so impressed by your pronunciation of Ypsilanti. I actually know someone who moved to Ypsilanti. Ah. And so it's apparently it has a very thriving art scene and is a very cool town in Michigan right now. That sounds awesome. Yeah. No, this is spelled Y-P-S-I-L-A-N-T-I. I I also think the Asilomari from Star Wars, the alien lizards that can block the force, probably have helped me deal with Ys that are E sounds. Yeah. Um, Weren't they panthers? No, they're lizards. There are also panthers. The panthers use the force to hunt, and they evolved a force bubble that is is silence and immune to the force to Ah. hide from the panthers. Um, But Dominic's later changed their name to Domino's and really popularized pizza delivery. They were also businessmen who bought that. It was was founded by a a guy named Dominic. Yeah, who made pizza. Yeah. This was sort of the turn of, on the East Coast... Pizza shops, there are tons and tons of pizza shops. There are very few chains because there are so many fuckers who make pizza. I mean, there's so many rays alone. Yeah. And so now in the Midwest, in California, the further away you get, you start having business people buying into pizza. They're not pizza makers. They're business people. Yeah. And, and that's why Domino's shit got so bad. And Dominic even was mad at them continuing to use his name and he said that like their pizza was insulting him and that's why they changed the name to Domino's. Yeah. They leave that out of all of the Domino's documentaries. Yeah. But Wikipedia has it. (laughs) Um, But yeah. So, I mean, I thought that their ad campaign um, of like, wow, our pizza sucks. Here's how we made it better. Brilliant oh my God, I want to study that. I'm sure there's classes on it. Oh, I bet. There there have to be business classes on it at the very least because it's this like unique Marketing. case of owning your failures. They lost well. They lost so well. They lost <laughs> so well. <laughs> like they owned up to their failures. They, they were honest and vulnerable. They talked about how they were going to change and then they followed up on those changes. I wish I was in school. I mean, I could do this anyway, but I love the idea of an essay of Domino's and the manifestation of Chris Gethard's philosophy of lose well. Oh, Jesus. I fucking love it. Um, but yeah, we wanted to get into a history of some specific types of pizza now. we've We've reached through history up to like the 60s the 70s uh more modern uh it's it's time to talk about the variations of pizza don't you think for us yeah and we're even going to talk about what separates the different pizzas because i didn't realize just how many types of pizza there were we're going to start with new york pizza the classic the uh arguably one of the first it seems like it yeah and the one that everyone I mean, it has to be everyone at pizza night is going to be eating New York pizza because it's made in New York. Yeah. And New York pizza has some interesting characteristics beyond just uh, that it is characteristically a large hand tossed thin crust sold in big ass slices. Yeah, it's also special because of the water that's yeah. used to make the dough, which reminds me of the reason New York bagels are yeah. also so special. And it's because there's the minerals that get picked up from the transportation of the water from the Catskills. Uh, the what makes the water soft, which means it has a low concentration of calcium and magnesium. And so the presence of calcium and magnesium in hard water, which is most of the other water in the nation, I think that... Boston is the only place with softer water than New York, oh, right? The other place with pizza. Yeah. Um, it, uh, the the magnesium and calcium strengthens gluten in the dough, which means that your finished pro- product is tougher and stronger. Uh, when it's soft water, your dough is soft and sticky. Um, 
which I think probably leads to like, you know, yeah. how it folds. Like yeah. that's the thing that it folds. I've always wondered about that. Yeah. Scott Wiener has uh Scott Wiener, the pizza guy, uh the the pizza tour guide Not in the New State York. Senator. Is he coming to pizza night? I don't know. We gotta, I hope so. We, we should gotta message. ask someone. Yeah, about we should that. see about that. We should we should see about that. Um he says that, you know, it it's not so much the water as it is that you have a bunch of like generations of pizza makers in New York and the air there, the environment there, it all goes into the dough. You know, the dough mm-hmm. has to cure in the air. Uh, dough curing is when it expands. I learned all of these things very recently. Um, <laughs> I'm like, baking, what? Uh, yeah. And they also don't toss their pizzas up in the air. They don't? No, that started around in the 50s, 60s, more as a show. Yeah, I saw that it was to entertain people in line. Yeah, but... um, which is something that I don't see nowadays. When I was a kid, no. they did that at yeah. our local pizza place. Um, but now not so much. I've definitely seen it. And I know one of my, someone I, someone I know used to work at Sabaro's mm-hmm. and knows how to throw the dough in the air. But one time he threw it too high and hit the light bulb. <laughs> oh, that's fucking hilarious. Um, but yeah, they say that, you know, classic pe- pizza makers are, are going to say, like, don't fucking do that. It spreads the dough weirdly. You're supposed to do it with your hands so that when you bake it, it becomes like nice and airy. I mean, that makes sense. It pulls all the air bubbles out yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, the uh, no, the other type of pizza that I think is the most famous, equal oh, yeah. with New York, is the Chicago pizza. And now food historians generally credit Ike Swell and Rick Ricardo for the invention of Chicago's deep dish style pizza. When? In 1943, the restaurant? Pizzeria Uno. At least that's what Pizzeria Uno says. Yes. Um, And we have a a nice little quote from the Cold War looms pizza pie versus hot dog by Thomas Morrow uh, in 1954. The pizza first made its appearance in Chicago around 1912. It was introduced by a man who went around with a pizza basket, a pizza filled basket on his head. At the same time, there was some doubt whether these pizzas were to be used as shingles or munched. I love that one. I also love how that relates back to the pizza or the pizza ambulatory. Pizza, pizza Rio. The pizza walking guys. Ambulatory. Who yeah. sing songs about how great their pizza are. Yeah, the pizza minstrels. Uh, pizza bards. However, and then maybe to differentiate themselves from New York, Chicago invented deep dish because some of those early ones in 1912 were not deep dish pizzas. They were more traditional pizzas. And people had been making deep dish right. style tomato pies, you know, for a while. But I think that part of a of a food gaining a uh, differentiation from other foods is someone saying, this is what this is, and I am the person who made it, and I am the person selling it. Yeah. And so capitalism is really the creator of all of these pizza types. Oh, yeah, because... Like war. Well, and because it craves a taxonomy of food. Yeah. So that it can all be marketed, whereas if it's just, that's what this place's pizza is like, that Mm -hmm. could be a very different thing. Um, But, so Pizza Uno says they invented deep dish, as we mentioned earlier, Tim Samuelson, Chicago's official cultural historian, says that there's not enough d- documentation to determine with certainty who invented Chicago-style deep dish pizza. You can actually order... F- oh, and also, you can actually order all this stuff, the frozen deep dish pizzas, from these places online. So if you want to get Chicago deep dish anywhere in the continental U.S., they will ship it to you. Yeah. Which is crazy. Isn't that crazy? They use... uh. I suppose they're using the shredded cheese. Yeah. I wonder if you can order like the fresh mozzarella ones. Probably not because it doesn't freeze well. But I'm also wondering if there's something about deep dish that makes it last better for that freezing because Mm. it's so dense. I'm wondering if that helps because I don't see thin sliced stuff being able to get shipped or across the country. I'm sure it can. I mean, it sits in the Safeway, you know. But they don't offer like pizza. I haven't seen a pizzeria offer to ship New York style across the country. I'm that's sure it true. could, but it's just interesting to me that that's what it's gets... It's because New York doesn't care about how you feel about their pizza. 
Yeah, that actually I have sounds such right. A bad accent. No, no, it doesn't. Pizzas, I mean, the accent didn't sound right. Your point pizza. sounded yeah. right. Thank you. Um, and then the other types of pizza that get referred to as Chicago pizza are stuffed pizza, like stuffed crust, which was created at Nancy's Pizza and Giordano's Pizzeria in the mid 1970s. And there's a square cut variation of the thin crust pizza that also gets called Chicago pizza. Mm. The next one is St. Louis pizza, uh, which uh, the characteristic is a very thin cracker like crust made without yeast um, and usually Proville processed cheese and then also squares and rectangles. So we have the differentiation being the shape Mm -hmm. and the crust right here. Um, and also the processed cheese. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that processed cheese was part of the hallmark of that style. Yeah, so interesting. Uh, and those cheeses were actually also invented for war. <laughs> yeah, they were invented at that same time, as was powdered cheese, your favorite box mac and cheese. Oh, yeah. Brought to you by war. Well, that makes sense, because then you don't even have to refrigerate it. Yeah. Uh, Detroit pizza is the next pizza we wanted to mention. Uh, that's, again, a rectangular pizza with a thick, crisp crust and toppings such as pepperoni and mushrooms. And the origin of Detroit-style pizza can be traced back historically to Buddy's Rendezvous in 1946, which later became Buddy's Pizza. Better name for a pizza place, probably. Um, and then in 2013, Little Caesars became the first chain to sell Detroit-style pizza nationwide. I haven't had it, though. Me neither. I'm curious. Right? Got to get to uh, Little Caesars. Um, uh, and then there's also the Jumbo, Jumbo Slice Pizza, which is a Washington, D.C. invention. It's huge. That's, that's basically all it is. It's just oversized uh, New York-style pizza, which is especially popular in the Adams Morgan neighborhood of D.C., but what I think is crazy is that an individual slice of that can be more than a foot long. Wow. Fuck. Uh, next is the New Haven style pizza, which is a thin crust coal fired Neapolitan pizza, uh, which means that it's going to have the, the the wet mozzarella. Yeah. Uh, no. It's Neapolitan. But it's, it's a Neapolitan style, but it doesn't have the wet mozzarella. The key oh. distinction of that from other types of Neapolitan pizza is that a plain one is just crust, oregano, and tomato sauce with a little bit of Parmesan on, or no, Whoa. a little bit of Pecorino Romano Whoa. on the top. So like if you're lactose intolerant, this is the pizza for you. Because you're still having a little bit of cheese, but it's not mozzarella. Mm. You have to specifically ask for mozzarella in New- if you're at a New Haven style pizzeria. Interesting. Uh, Next is the Trenton pizza or the tomato pie. Uh, Yeah, this is an interesting one. Yeah. So 19th century American cookbooks had various recipes for tomato pies, um, which were just like tomatoes baked in a pie crust as if they are any other fruit. Yeah. but it evolves then from like, you know, New Jersey, Trenton, Philadelphia traditions. And this is a quote from about it from New Jersey Monthly. Where Nick Gazzaro remembers his gra- his grandfather, Joe Papa, one of the founding fathers of Trenton Pizza, relating a tale that could in part account for the nature of tomato pie. The story was they were making bread and they put some sliced tomatoes on it and cooked it. And that was it. <laughs> Simple shit. I love it. Back I love in that. Napoli. This is what you do. Um, and so the main distinction between pizza and Trenton tomato pies is, or sorry, between New York style pizza and Trenton tomato pies, is that unlike... Unlike a lot of some of the other ones, it's circular, has a thin crust, and and, it, and includes cheese. And in this style, but yeah, the, the everything's placed on in a different order. So it goes mozzarella and toppings on first, and then the tomato sauce on the top. Which I like. A lot of the Chicago style deep dishes are like that. Yeah, I, that's what I was thinking when I was researching this. Is it seems like a shallow dish pizza. Yeah, you know? like it's it has the a lot of my favorite parts of the deep dish, but isn't as dense. Yeah, which sounds great to me. <laughs> uh, then we have the uh, our last one that we thought we would go through is the California pizza, of course, our dear home state that does all sorts of shit to well, food. Why? Because we're as west as you can get. It's not Ooh, only home state. It's not it was invented in Berkeley and San Francisco. 
Oh, hometown pizza. Yeah. California style pizza was invented pretty much at the same time in 1980 by Ed, Ed Ledoux, the Prince of Pizza, who then worked as pizza chef for Spectrum Foods Prego restaurant in Cal Hollow in San Francisco mm. and in Berkeley at, by Alice Waters at Chez Panisse. And what uh, what differentiates a California style pizza from other pizzas? So structurally, it's basically a New York style pizza, but with our water. So they'll not like it as so much. So thin crust. So thin crust, but it has toppings from the California cuisine cooking style, which is just sort of using locally sourced ingredients from California. Random produce. And it generally has been in our random produce incorporated into like French and Italian staples. So and it makes also, sense. And uh, also inventiveness. Like California yeah. Pizza Kitchen, of course, exists. They started just putting whatever the fuck yeah. on top of pizza. Well, not even... Pizza. I mean, I suppose they they were putting whatever the fuck they wanted. Buffalo sauce and chicken and chow mein on top of a pizza crust. So really just hearkening back to the ancient times (laughs) when we ate shit off of flat bread. And one time when I was at work, a coworker of mine who was a New Yorker walked in to our lunch where we all had pizzas from here. In the California style. The office ordered it. And he was catered everything. It would have been a free lunch. But he's such a New Yorker that he walked in, saw there were like cut up pieces of potato on the pizza. And on the spot, he just turned around and walked out. (laughs) Because he was like, I'm not okay with this. I'm a New Yorker. This isn't pizza. I'm going to go buy lunch rather than eat this. And I feel like I love that. It's beautiful. I love it. It's beautiful. That that really does separate, show the distinction between New York style and California style, which is... Look, we got a lot of weird stuff, and we're just going to put it on, and you're just going to deal with it, because we're, as you said, as far west as you can get. We're high as fuck all the time. It's true. California has always been high as fuck all the time. Where we're 420 is from, my hometown, literally, Marin County, is where the idea of 420 is from. We will eat anything off of a pizza pizza crust. Yeah, let's see. Let's put those on there. Are they good? Yeah. Those <laughs> random things are great. <laughs> Fuck yeah. This is everything that was in my cupboard on top of a pizza. But there are Fuck limits. Yeah. There are limits. We may be adventurous eaters, but the only more adventurous eaters are the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles living in the sewers of New York City. And some of the pizzas they've made are licorice and granola pizza. Delicious. Peanut butter and clams. Fuck yeah. Jelly beans and sausage. Ho ho! And a shredded coconut and sweet pickles. I'm allergic to coconut. I also hate sweet pickles. That's the only one that we reject. No, I would, all of these. Yeah, the only one. The others sound delicious. The others sound like they should become staples of California cuisine. We got to call Chez Panisse after this episode's over. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and that's that's the stuff that we put together. Yeah. About pizzas for y'all. We wanted to do just a quick overview, some points of interest. Pizza is a lot there's a lot about pizza Mm -hmm. there are books about pizza there are so many books about pizza um and they're all very interesting there's tons of podcasts about pizza and i absolutely want to recommend i think it's the afternooners it was um i wrote it down when you said it earlier it was after noonified after noonified i i definitely want to recommend them because they're Super informative. Uh, one of the hosts, I think it was Emily, actually read like two books about pizza. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. They're so interesting. There is so much cultural and anthropological and sociological and fucking just environmental history. Oh, yeah. Built up in pizza and the ingredients and the science behind it. Ooh. Wow. Pizza is so much, y'all. Pizza is almost, it's just everything. Dare I say, better than sandwiches. I do actually agree with you on that. I mean, pizza is so beloved that Connor Ratliff wrote the song, Mm. No One Wants Pizza on Christmas Day, Mm, mm -hmm. because the notion of a day where no one wants pizza is ridiculous. It's absurd. Yeah. I've had pizza a lot on Christmas Day. I haven't, but I mean, I would always want it. I would never be like, no, it's Christmas. We can't have pizza. Right? Right. Um, so Forrest Keeper of the Canon, if sure. you were a pizza, what kind of pizza would you be? I think it'd be deep dish. Yeah? Yeah, I do. I, li- I think I'd be deep dish because 
I just... We have to eat you with a fork and knife? I love the density. Yeah. And I just love it. I love rich... I, I love, like, flavor. And I'm a lot. I'm you just a, a lot. lot. I'm a lot to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think deep dish where you have to like, you know, you'd really handle me in little bits over like two or three days is I think really, really accurate. And I think I'd have, it would be like olives and sausage, like nothing too fancy, but like just dense. good, solid, dense standbys. Real rich. There's so much going on in every slice. <laughs> <laughs> so Emily, pineapple. Hmm. What would you be if you were a pizza? I would be a pineapple pizza. Just pineapple? Nothing else? I think I would do, I'm definitely like, a th- not a super thin crust, not like an extreme no. thin crust, but like a like a normal crust pizza with uh, shredded mozzarella, a lot of tomato sauce, because mm-hmm. I fucking love tomato sauce, mm-hmm. and I was brought to you by war now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not true, but kind of true. I mean, in the sense that we all were. Well, because my great grandfather came here because. Whoa, okay. Actually, brought to you by war. Great grandpa came here because it was World War One. Oh yeah. And made his way to California. Uh, Grandpa on the other side stationed in fucking Berkeley during World War Two, and that's why. He and Bubby yeah. moved here. Wow. And had their family wow. here. Wow. Wow. Emily Pineapple brought to you by war. Um I think I'd do I think I'd do pineapple and olive because um I'm sweet and salty. What about some jalapeno because you're spicy? Oh, I am pretty spicy. Definitely some jalapeno because it's like a kick when you don't really fucking expect it. Yeah. Because like some of the jalapenos are not spicy, but then like occasionally you'll get a bite of one and there's a seed in there. And, that's and you're the like, chaos. whoa. Yeah. Those are the chaos seeds. Um, and honestly, probably sweet potato or something else weird. Like pick a mm. seasonal thing. Yeah. And it's on there because fuck your rules. Because you're definitely part of California Gosh, cuisine. I am so California. Yeah. I don't think I've never even... I've never been anywhere but California for longer than a week. It's true. Yeah. I think that I might turn into a pumpkin if I leave California for too long. I think that's probably true. Like there isn't enough THC in the air (laughs) in other places. (laughs) (laughs) It's like the the air in New York with with the dough, you know? I just, you know... I don't know why that broke me so much. I'm so forced. What do you expect to see this Wednesday for Pizza Night with Sky Daddy, David Ray Martinez, and his son, Sebastian Ray Martinez? Excellent improvisers, bringers of joy, uh, Jesus from Coochie Creek. Um, I expect to see, you know, just like... A holiday that's a lot like sandwich night, but like a little, you know, a little better. Just a little better? Just a little better. I don't, I mean, I think you know, sandwich night has had nine years mm-hmm. to develop and get itself going. I think being even a little bit better your first time out of the gate is a lot. That's true. But I mean, if anyone can do it, it's Sky Daddy. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I have a lot more faith that it, w- it may be better than sandwich night with Sky Daddy <laughs> than I would with Carmen. <laughs> that's a really good point. <laughs> Actually, I think you're absolutely because right. Because to be better than Sandwich Night, it has to be doing what Sandwich Night does. And I think that an episode with David Ray Martinez will be a lot more like Sandwich Night because mm-hmm. I think he'll just have so much fun hanging out, talking to people, chatting yeah. about pizza and just like making a community event. And singing. And singing and hyping and doing all that kind of stuff. Whereas I think that with Carmen, it probably would have taken a form a little bit more... Aggressive. Yeah, uh, more aggressive against, towards Chris, especially, but also just more, I think there'd be more, Carmen, would, I think, would plan out bits and, like, it would probably have a little bit more of a great night show energy, not, mm-hmm. like, specifically, but, like, that thing where he has, like, planned stuff he's going to throw to. Yeah. And that's not the spirit of Sandwich Night. No, that's more of a, I feel like he 
is not as comfortable in chaos as Sky Daddy or Chris. Well, especially right now with how much he's been getting booed and everything. Like, he'd probably <laughs> want some stuff planned to fall back on if it gets too out of control. He is a creator of chaos for absolute oh, yeah. sure. Um, so, I'm just really fucking excited. What do you think will happen on this episode you're excited for? I have traditionally uh, expected disembodied penises, but there is going to be an actual child hosting this episode, and I therefore do not think that that will be on this show. I do wonder if there will be novelty gross pizzas. Ooh, I hope so. Because as a kid, that would be the thing I would want the most. (gasps) Oh, man, that's what I want to see. I want to see Sebastian make a pizza yes a pizza with anything that he wants on it anything Anything. he wants he has the mind of a child which is more pure and unfettered by like the weights of capitalism and war weighing him down nah he is free he is light he is air and his creative mind i want to see what it will do with a pizza i tried dipping pizza in milk as a child that sounds terrible it was not good (laughs) i did it once (laughs) And it stuck with you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to this day. Um, so, yeah, that's that's pizza night. We hope to see all of you this Wednesday night, December 18th, for pizza night with David Ray Martinez and Sebastian Ray Martinez and Keith. Keith Haskell, yes. Banana Man. Forgot about him. And I'm so sorry, Keith. I'm so excited to see you. He's been so key to drumming up like interest in Pizza Night. He has. And he is a child. He's a brand new child. Ooh, do you think he'll bring the brand new second child? Do you think he'll bring the first child? I think it's more likely that he'll bring uh, Xander than their next, than their current baby. Do you think Bethany will be there? She deserves a night out. I wouldn't be surprised. She has two small yeah. children. and She deserves a yeah. fucking night. No, I wouldn't be surprised if she, if they're both there. Um, because they have to one up Gether yeah. bringing his kid. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So now there's if there's two kids, that's twice as many kids. And yeah, it's better than sandwich night. Oh my gosh, yeah. And like, there's Sebastian too, but yeah. Sebastian's like obviously a much more of like a older host kid. and an older kid, but like still kid, kid. That'd be three kids. Three kids. Two you two super young ones. Two like cute. Puppy yeah. children. Yeah, puppy children. <laughs> like at the puppy stage where you're like, oh, how yeah. cute. Yeah. Puppy children. Puppy Jesus children. Christ. Um, so yeah, see us on... Uh, Why this... did you take Sky Daddy's name in vain? I'm so sorry, Sky Daddy. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Sky Daddy, for taking your name in vain. I appreciate you and I'm so excited for pizza night, better than sandwich night. Uh, everyone check it out. Everyone jump on the Discord. Everyone share with your friends about this. Host pizza parties. Yes, host everyone pizza, pizza parties. Host pizza parties and get on Twitch and say that you're hosting a pizza party and the number of humans that are yeah. in your party because that counts as views. And tell us on Discord what kind of pizza you'll be eating as you watch pizza night. We'd yes. love to see that. We must see that. We love all of you. Uh, eat pizza. Pizza in the morning. Pizza, pizza in the evening. Pizza at supper time. When pizza's on a pizza, you can eat pizza anytime. Remember the pizza cake that we made? Oh, yeah, we made a pizza cake. We should talk about this and then wrap it up. Yeah, I made a pizza cake. Let's be real. I assembled it. You did help You assemble. made the pieces. I assembled it. So we got... Three pizzas from, from pizza Domino's Hut. from Pizza Hut. They're Pizza Hut because Pizza Hut had just refreshed their offerings oh. and offered their like fancy crusts. Ooh. So what we did is we put down a pizza, then we threw some baked ziti on top. Yeah. Uh, then we put a pizza on top of that, and then we put some mac and cheese on that, and then we topped it off with another pizza. It was for a party where what you had to do was make the most fattening thing you could. And we made something so intimidating that multiple people looked at it and were like, I'm not, I'm not touching that. We also never did that any year moving forward. No. I think I won. I think think we we won. won. We definitely won it. I pointed that out multiple times, but we won. We won. And we ate it for like a week. Yeah. Because there was so much left. (laughs) So much. And one slice was like two meals. Yeah. No, it's impossible. You just kind of like would attack it with a fork, yeah. like the mashed potato mountain in uh, in that movie about Close aliens. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Yeah. 
Exactly that. All right, friends. Uh, tell us what kind of pizza you are. Good night and good Kalon. All right, all right. Can everybody bow their heads? God is good. God is great. Yes, yes, he is. Um, look at your food and say, God. Everybody in the room, say, look at your food say, God. Mm-mm-mm. I'm going to eat the shit out this food. Amen. Amen.